All right, we're close to ending our discussions, part after part after part about this, who is this Jesus and the Christ and the confession and, and declaration by Peter and the group that Jesus was the Christ. And I want to finish just as a recap a little bit of where we are. Uh, physically, they came up to here. Remember, they came from Bethsaida and they came up through here and about 25 miles up here and they were in the villages around this area, Caesarea Philippi. And I just wanted to distinguish the fact that there's another Caesarea mentioned there um, in history and all. And there was two Caesareas, one here and the one here. This Caesarea, Herod the Great, Great built and Philip, his son, built this one up. Um, it was given to Herod the Great back here. It was given to him when he became the king. So it was the northern part here. And Jesus uh, came all the way from the furthest place right up here where Dan was and all that in the Old Testament. We've already discussed some of that. But Caesarea Maritime right here was this Caesarea. Herod built this one big time. It was an, an amazing building there. It's a harbor. And it actually he built underneath the water, which is pretty miraculous, not miraculous, but genius, a guy. How did he build stuff under the water when they didn't have the scuba diving equipment and all that? But it's an interesting study there. But there's Caesarea here, Caesarea, and the Caesarea Philippi right there. Um, right there is where uh, he's, he, he shared this, this, this story here. I mean, he shared about like that who he was. And then the next passage is, um, started a whole different thing and different things happen after that and that's why I want to bring out just for a little bit and then the next video hopefully we'll start getting a little bit more into what Jesus said you know after they got that peak understanding uh, about you know like it was a peak in their ministry and their lives when they realized who he was things change I've already said some of these and I'd like to reiterate them just for a second Five things happened that were really different after that, for the, this time to the point where he died on the cross. Five big things happened. Number one, the miracles and parables almost disappeared. Now, he did a miracle here and there. He heals a blind man coming up, Bartimaeus and this friend and all. But there are definitely miracles and parables that almost disappeared. There's here and there some stuff. But, like, suddenly things change. I think... The power of God was operating, but it was quiet, and it was more directed in instruction and teaching and all. So I, I think once the, the signs and the parables that was predicted in the Old Testament about Jesus, once the miracles and signs showed that Jesus truly was the Messiah, then he, when the, he, he was really interested in the world finding out, but especially right now, the apostles who are going to change the world, these 12 men. And once he, they realized that the, the Christ really was in, in this guy where he was actually uh, like fulfilling Isaiah 53 verse, I mean, 35 verses five and six. Uh, 53 is a very popular chapter about Jesus, but switch those numbers around. He fell, by the way, my disciple uh, fell. If you remember the past, uh, <laughs> the past videos, I, could, I just heard him fall. Anyway. If you flip the uh, 53 to 35, Isaiah 35, then you have verses 5 and 6 that talk about Jesus healing the deaf and the blind and all that. Not Jesus, but the one coming. And he proved that by his miracles. But after they realized that, it seemed like he quieted down. Now, still miracles and healings happen today. But it was pronounced in that time. And in the book of Acts, it was pronounced again to all the other people, all the other Jews and Samaritans in, in the world that miracles and parables prove that Jesus or miracles prove that Jesus really was the uh, the Messiah. But he quieted him down. It's pretty interesting change there. Uh, the kingdom of God was not mentioned as much. Now he did show the kingdom of God in his in his talks. He it, like he'll talk about the vineyard and the and, and various things and the. Oh, uh, the landowner, he mentions that. That's all about the kingdom of God, but this time he kind of quieted down and not preached quite verbally, strongly pronouncing the kingdom of God like he did in his first, what, year and a half of his ministry. So the kingdom of God wasn't mentioned as much, particularly. Uh, the focus was on his disciples. I said that, I think, in the last or so video. Not as much on the crowds. He's definitely had crowds here and there, and there were crowds following him, but he really focused a lot of his time and attention and his teachings to the disciples themselves. And so the first eight chapters, uh, 
of, of Mark really was mainly in Galilee, the northern, the north part of Israel. And then the last eight chapters, there's 16 total in Mark, very small book, it's smaller than the other Gospels. The first eight chapters are mainly in the north part, which is Galilee. The last eight chapters are mainly in the south part, which is Jerusalem, Judea. He went in there and really talked a lot, laced a lot of the records. Now, I, I, I think this is just the writer. I'm talking about Mark, you know, how it kind of changes here. Well, not just in Mark, but Matthew, Luke, and John as well. But uh, a lot of his chapters really are headed coming up here towards Jerusalem. And the fifth thing I want to say is that the first part was sort of like uh, sunshine. You know, a lot of great things. Wow, look at Jesus. Look at him. He's becoming popular among the people. He did all these wonderful miracles and people are really amazed and coming to him flocks of crowds. The second part is sort of that sunshine being dimmed, as it's been said. You know, guys talked about this. It's good stuff. And it's like the sunshine was dimmed and it's like a darkness now that started coming. It's a, it's a tragic thing that's about to happen here when he goes to Judea and he's rejected by Jerusalem and all that by the leadership. Super sad. So it seems like darkness kind of came in more uh, and it was gloomy and dark and grim, dim. Uh, but you know what? If, if This is kind of like your life might happen like that. I've had tons of sunshine, but I've had some incredibly dark, evil attacks by the powers of darkness against me. Really tough things coming deeply in, into my spirit. And I thank God for those because I just hung in there and I waited on God. And then light comes and understanding and life. Oh, just so cool. This is real stuff right here. So one more time, I'm going to show you this, this thing here. It's kind of like this darkness right after this part. See, it's all really good uphill. Then it goes downhill in a, in a bad way, like darkness in a pit, like mountain pit top back down to the valley, way down here. The Israel was in a valley, you know, at all this thing, time. You know, it was a really dark, cold, religious time for most of Israel. They were under false uh, influences of teachers, the Pharisees and the scribes. They, the, the, the religion of, of Jesus, of, of God was the Judaism had become somewhat cold and, uh, and their hearts weren't warmed. And that's where John the Baptist started preaching repentance. And then Jesus comes to Many of them did get saved and all that. But the, uh, my point is up to here, it's been a lot of sunshine. And then it went down into sort of a dark period. And then of course, light dawn when Jesus Christ raised from the dead. And it's like, yay. Uh, then he went up and, he, and we don't have to have all that darkness. Even times of darkness and storms and problems and struggles in your life, if you come and wait on God and look to Jesus, that's the key, then light will come again in the midst of darkness. And even though it doesn't seem like it, let's say it really becomes spiritually dark and you go into a deep darkness or a valley or something. I've gone through those, you know, dry and darkness and all. And you're crying out to God and he's dead silent and it just seems like there's no understanding no light you don't get it why am i going through this what is it is he real is god real is is jesus really the son of god all those questions that hit you and they can hit you you go through deep darkness you wait in there you wait in the prayer closet and you wait on god and light will come again and it'll beam up and you have a deeper more ex exciting relationship with god than ever the light really does dawn on you and so that's what is going to happen with these guys you fell over would you please stand up can't you stand up <laughs> just kidding anyway so uh, let me get his feet oh he's pushing his feet up come on bend your feet flex them there we go watch him drop Come on, <laughs> here we are again. So anyway, this is great. Jesus is really sharing the truth and, and then he shares dark days are ahead. He, he predicts some things in their lives later. It's like, what? And then, whoo, it happens. And then later, light dawns and, and it's really exciting. All right, thanks for listening. God bless you.